this morning, the tea time, time. We, we yeah. held some conversation about Buddhism and uh, yeah, monastery and things like that. But I'm not sure if you if I, I have, have more questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I always have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Meaningless means everything is have a meaning. So me, the meaning of meaningless is meaningless because everything is meaning. So it's a dreaming, life is just dreaming, but just dream, knowing that is dream. It's a life. It's a life. It's life. So we have to dream, but it's an important point. Knowing the life is the dreaming. Does that make sense to you? There is a very good example. So, everything is live like this. There is a sound, right? Mm -hmm. But where? is the sound. So just happen and it's no more. Mm -hmm. So every moment is like that. Our life is like that. We talk about that. We can't catch the sound of a crack. We cannot catch the uh, some a moment of the life. If we suffer something, we catch the past. Because time is just passed by, every moment just passed by. The mountains around Seoul are packed with hikers every weekend, many of whom will spend a few hours at one of the Buddhist temples. Yet, when you ask these mothers and hikers, most won't identify with shamanism or Buddhism, or anything as their religion. In Korea, the notion that a layperson would identify with one religion came with the Catholic Church in 1784, being further reinforced by the organization of the indigenous Tongkuk religion, and when the Protestants arrived and evangelized in 1884. The Temple State program was initially created out of talks between the government-run Ministry of Culture and Tourism and the leaders of the Jogye Order the largest Buddhist order in Korea. The Ministry of Culture and Tourism wanted Korean temples to house the large number of visitors expected for the 2002 World Cup hosted in South Korea. While the idea of housing drunken football fans in their temples sparked controversy, the Choge order eventually agreed, given that the participants would agree to follow general temple etiquette and take part in a cultural, historical, and spiritual learning experience. Arriving at the temple, our clothes are given up for temple clothes, identical in appearance for males and females, teens and older adults, but different from the robes the monks were wearing. It's clear this is somewhat of an exciting experience for most. Going back to our own rooms, most of us were given a roommate, too. We gave up the choices in our clothing. People spoke with the freedom of the temple clothes, usually referring to their bagginess compared to the tightness of the Western style of clothing that has infiltrated and spurred Korean fashion design. Temple clothes, while taking away the freedom to pick and choose what we wear, represent freeing the mind from the attachment to our outward appearance to the world. This helped my focus transfer from wherever it had been to looking within my own mind. 
Although the monks typically wore clothes slightly different from the temple stay participants, wearing temple clothes brings one to feel in harmony with the community of monks. Temple stay participants, monks, and the temple stay director all eat the same food at the same time, chant during the morning and nightly ceremonies together, drink tea together, and often meditate together, opening the participants into the daily life of Korean Buddhists. You could say that a temple stay begins the moment you decide to go on one, or better yet, the first time you are aware of its existence. What you bring to the temple stay matters. Your thoughts, opinions, or knowledge of temple stays beforehand will likely affect your thoughts, opinions, and knowledge during the experience. While both South Koreans and foreigners are allowed at many temple stays, some only offer programs in the Korean language or specifically for Korean nationals, their expectations and why they partook in the temple stay differed. South Koreans, when I asked, mostly answered that they were at the temple for rest. This seemed to mean rest from their busy lives at home and in the city. As most temple stays are located within the mountains that fill around 70% of the country, taking part in one is seen as being in nature. Korean temples are typically made in a certain location and in a specific way as to cause the least damage and look in harmony with the surrounding wilderness. Foreigners, when asked, tended to view a temple stay as a way to learn about Korean Buddhism and Korean culture. Their favorite aspect of the experience was often asking questions to the monks who could speak English or the temple stay staff at the temple. It is easy to see the difference between doing something for rest or for a learning experience, although the temple stay at Gumsunza attempts to do both and often at the same time. It promoted resting from busying the mind and body and resting in what you come to learn. At the temple, there were many periods of silence. The urge to check my phone slowly passed as I got used to being where I was with who I was with. At a temple stay experience, you probably won't make a lifelong friend, and it is certainly not geared towards the sharing of painful and troubling thoughts and experiences. One noticeably different social convention between even spending a day at the temple and a day in Seoul or back home was that you greeted people by bowing slightly with your hands together. A temple stay for the most part is rid of unnecessary conversation, though great conversations can certainly take place. Tea time with the monk was usually a highlight of conversation between the monk and temple stay participants. An important aspect of a temple stay is following the temple rules. Indeed, the first part of a temple stay at Gumsunsa involves learning how to live at the temple. Interestingly, a Korean monk at the temple, Ilga, spent his first eight years as a monk studying and practicing temple etiquette and the Buddhist precepts. During the temple stay at Gumsunsa, it takes about half an hour to explain rules and temple etiquette. But the temple stay director told us that the main rule to keep in mind was not to infringe upon anyone else's freedom. I, I can learn uh, how, how to communicate with uh, normal people. Mm -hmm. right. For, be, before I, uh, I, before I came, came here, mm -hmm. uh, I was in the mountain for eight years in Jeonanamdo province. It's, uh, the temple stay program is uh, it's very uh, new, new challenge for me yeah. as well. Right, yeah. right. Because he stayed in some kind of a hermitage in the mountains uh, for yeah. eight years. Now he came to Seoul city and <laughs> he went to the Dungu University and met some people and more people. Mm -hmm. and young generation mm, he right. talks a lot maybe <laughs> some kind of challenge he uh, now he major in some kind of teaching Buddhism mm.
Later. Later, let's go into there. Let's go there. So this is the main Buddha hall and the Buddha hall. So if you want to go inside, use the side doors. And the name is the Japan Jung in Korean. That means great, silent, lightful space. In the Buddhism, the light means wisdom. The Buddha explained about the light like this. We are living here. And this is like walking in the forest. But we are closing the eyes. Because of that, we run into the tree, <laughs> sleep, fall. We are suffered. So, we hope to escape from here and we hope, maybe kind of, we desire to get something special, kind of powers, something I don't have, something special wisdom, special enlightenment things, but the Buddha said, we don't need, because just open the eyes, then we can escape from that delusion, from that suffering. So, because of that, the Buddha said, don't worry, be happy. We don't need something special, just we already have and recognize that. So, the silence is for that, for recognizing myself. Kind of this. If this is a kind of lake, a pond, and now we are running into this pond because of that there are so many waves and the mud and the dirt float in the water but I want to look at the bottom what something is there then what do I need to do? do I need to do something? yeah, like that do nothing then we can meet the clean water naturally so we don't need to fight with this water we don't need to get the peace calmness tranquility from the other place already in the water just now it is covered by some waves so release the hand rest that is the silence then we can meet that something we call enlightenment. So the enlightenment is not something special. That is the moment of opening the eyes. So the Buddhism practicing is not for enlightenment. Buddhism practicing is for finding out myself, for knowing the moment of kind of our moment present. There is certainly an element of fakeness in a temple stay, from using phones, to taking selfies while meditating, to somewhat random arts and crafts activities. The idea of delving into something totally pious or otherworldly is contradicted strongly. The temple is a place in the world too. Sunwu would sometimes say that meditation isn't something special, that it is in our daily life. Does your daily life feel like a meditation? But every activity at the temple seems to involve some learning. Each activity, including the meals and even including the rest time, are moments to learn. The true purpose of rest time at the temple always seem to be to return to an empty mind. An essential part of every temple stay was meditation. It was taught that everything we do or don't do at the temple should be seen as a way to meditate. In my many conversations with the Korean nun, she often focused on the idea that all experiences, encounters, and stimuli are ways to return to our original mind. Everything in life um, can be an experience of Zen 
meditation mm -hmm. or a way towards enlightenment, mm -hmm. um, why specifically become mm -hmm. a monk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my case, <laughs> if I know <laughs> what is the real means, meditation means, I didn't <laughs> want to become a monk. I, at that time, I just know just one way to practice mm. Mm, meditation. At that time, I know. But mm, all kind of job and all kind of role is needed in the life. So there is any special meaning, but there is some meaning. Even if not monk, and all kind of work, all kind of uh, something in the life is needed. And I think monk is a kind of a symbolic being, I think. There is nothing to happen in the real world. So I think uh, my life is kind of a symbol in the world, in the life. Sometimes I say to you, emptiness in our mind, mm -hmm. inside our mind. Mm -hmm. The place where we can hear, we can listen, we can feel. So there is some kind of leader for the emptiness. He said the emptiness is your don't know mind. Mm -hmm. Just don't know mind. Just come back to the don't know mind. Mm -hmm. In the true world, is emptiness also full? Mm -hmm. But the hometown, the essence, mm -hmm. essence is emptiness. Mm -hmm. And that emptiness means have some uh, possibility, all kind of a possibility. Mm. Emptiness means not nothing. So even if some uh, serious thing happen, just we wait time, just pass away. <laughs> so nothing. Mm -hmm. so we can start new and press. Mm -hmm. Our mind is like that. Every moment, is, mm -hmm. our mind is fresh and new. So we can use fresh mind. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it's, this time is for the meditation in Korean. Maybe you heard the sun meditation. This is the practice what the Buddha did before for becoming the Buddha. 사실 어, 참선은 한 가지가 아니라 여러 가지였어요. So originally the sun meditation among there there are there were so many ways for practicing the sun meditation. 그 중에서 이제 우리나라 그한 한국에서 어 지금 하고 있는 가나선이라는 참선을 해보도록 하겠습니다. Today we will practice the 관화선 in Korean in one of the kind of the sun meditation. 가나선은 화두를 들고 하는 거예요. The Kanhasan is using the Hadu. Hadu는 어 이제 어떤 어 깨달음으로 가기 위한 궁극적인 질문을 말합니다. 질문도로 묻고. Simply the Hadu is a question, but this is a kind of a great question. That means this is the way to the wisdom. The truth of this universe, kind of ultimate truth. 그래서 그 화두는 한 가지가 아니라 어, 화두를 드는 사람에 따라서 1,700개 정도가 지금까지 남아 있어요. And so, but we are different. So, like that, there, there are so many different hadu, so many different groups. Great questions. So almost 1,700 questions here. 네, 그 중에서 가장 어, 보편적인 어, 
이목 이목고 화두를 한번 들어보도록 하겠습니다. So at this time the we will hold the big question 이목고 in Korean. 어 무엇을 찾느냐고 하면 매 순간에 매 우리가 깨어 있을 때건 어 잠자 있을 때건 항상 보고 듣고 느끼고 지각하는 그것이 무엇인가 이것이 질문 화두가 되겠습니다. So the i m o t o is a kind of is the question for asking to ourselves and that is the question for finding out my self and maybe not just self that the something so this is a question for finding out that and the something is that we are listening something we are looking something we are talking feeling touching any things and there is the some things which is which can fill the universe so this question is for finding out that thing 원래는 어 스승이 제자한테 화두를 던져 주고 그냥 제자는 그 화두를 아무 질문 없이 아무 의심 없이 그냥 들기만 하면 되는 거예요. So, normally the master monk give this question to their student monk and then the student monk just keep reminding that keep thinking that question without any doubt any anxieties or any We trust. 하지만 우리는 어, 참선이 처음이고 어, 왜 해야 되는지 잘 모르기 때문에 간단한 예를 하나, 간단한 설명을 해드리겠습니다. But to the monk, they have some belief for finding out, or they have some kind of purpose for their practice. For then they can keep practicing that questions, but. We are beginners. We don't know why we have to find out the meaning of that question. Kind of that who am I things. So for that, let's talk more shortly. The history of Korean Buddhism is one of constant tension between images of both unenlightened and enlightened beings breaking the precepts and a re-intensified focus on the importance of the precepts. Indeed, Sun Wu said that both at Gum Sun Tzu and historically at other temples, there is much debate over how to interpret the precepts. Korean monks were also in connection with a whole world of East Asian Buddhist thought, and some monks traveled to the Buddhist homeland and beyond. The famous monk Wanyo, who lived between 617 and 686 AD, has quite an interesting enlightenment story and consequent way of life. While traveling to China in search of wisdom to be gained from their Zen masters, he spent a night in a cave. Waking up in the middle of a rainy night, thirsty, he grabbed something that felt like a bowl with water in it and drank to his delight. The next morning, he realized he had enjoyed the taste of drinking blood out of a human skull at this moment, he realized every experience depended on the mind. He needn't go to China in search for the teachings of other masters. Enlightenment was found within his own mind. Wanyo drops out of the monastery, lives among the people, spreading his enlightenment. Tales of him drinking in the bars and walking down the streets, spreading goodwill abound. His enlightened experience shines through his every action, even the actions that break the precepts. Wanyo set the foundations for the harmonization of all doctrines in Korea. His story has had an influence on the monks keeping the precepts. Bodhisattva activities are sometimes seen as being more important than just keeping the precepts. The penal system set up by the Jogi order shows this bias, giving more and worse prosecutions to the monk if the monk was harmed in the breaking of the precepts.
The equally well-known monk Chanal notices the greed and corruption taking over Korean monasteries more than ever in the 1200s. Ceremonies held so nobles would donate large sums of money with the idea of generating good merits. A national exam ranking monks in positions associated with greater wealth and monasteries holding large pieces of land and being exempted from taxes led to many wanting to enter the monastic life in order to search for an easy, wealthy lifestyle. Chanal, passing the national exams, decides instead to spend years meditating and reading sutras in the Korean wilderness. After an enlightenment experience while reading a sutra, he invites any person serious in the cultivation of wisdom and meditation to join him in a way of monastic life that has served crucial importance for nearly all aspects of Korean Buddhism. Chanal's three separate enlightenment experiences happened after reading passages in Sewn texts, and he never held a Dharma master. Chanal's soteriological thought had the goal of helping any person interested in cultivating the way. While he did not travel outside of Korea, he spent his time meditating and extensively studying Mahayana sutras and texts, and possibly had knowledge of influential Theravada and Taoist texts as well. He sought in the scriptures what could help him in his practice of meditation and his experience of life. The path he laid out for practitioners was meant to show the use and benefit and thinking behind the most important sewn and doctrinal schools' various approaches and practices. His experience and understanding of the path as one of sudden awakening to the essence and function of our nature followed by gradual cultivation of no thought while also cultivating bodhisattva activities, harmonized Mahayana Buddhist thought and practice in a way that was unprecedented at the time. When answering the question of who we are, there are various ways to go about knowing. The focus in Mahayana Buddhism on everyone having the Buddha nature, or being a Buddha, and seeing oneself as such, is what Chanal claims we must know in order to suddenly awaken to who we are. The Buddha nature refers to the original emptiness in the mind. Even consciousness can be experienced as a rising out of emptiness pointed at when we see how consciousness can change both in intensity and direction. Recent neuroscience research is increasingly showing how our mind is constantly making decisions about how to see and react to the world. Chanel wants us to see that these decisions and reactions in our mind have typically been formed through reinforced habits of mind and body, and because of our Buddha nature, everything in our experience is constantly being reflected and disappears the moment it happens, unless our functioning mind decides to attach on to any part of existence as being permanent, like the mind attaches on to a sleeping dream as being reality. The Buddha nature is said to not be influenced by existence or non-existence, conveying it to be beyond the limits of time and space. Yet, for soteriological purposes, our way of getting to know this experience comes through reflecting on and experiencing the original emptiness in our mind. While this sudden awakening is said to be a full awakening to who we are, Chanel sees within himself and other masters that people are often so tied down within their created habits of doing and reacting to the world that further cultivation is often necessary in order to close the gap between knowing and doing. Even for monks keeping the precepts, which conveys that they have habits of not harming others or themselves, attachment is difficult to get beyond. A sudden awakening to who we are is necessary to see that when we are cultivating good intentions and actions, we are not really cultivating anything at all from the viewpoint of our essence or Buddha nature. The practice of cultivating no thought is meant to show us that wherever and whenever, whether in ceremonies and meditation halls or in subways and dancing clubs, the essential nature of the mind remains silent and still, free to function in any way. When I was when I was young, I thought uh, Buddhist monk was 
the the best the best condition to concentrate on and how to run then it the to to know about put put Buddha's teaching right. and originally yeah. most life is very con con convenient and uh, very proper. We made it. We made it. Not right and not correct. Right. We just made it to know much better Buddhism mm. for convenience. And we have the purposes to harmony. Mm. Mm, who person who live together. Ultimate purpose is we have to be beyond the rule. We have to be liberation of the rule. We don't have to catch the rule. <laughs> mm. It's also kind of our <coughs> prison. The rule also is a kind of prison. Mm -hmm. So we have many arguments about the understanding, understanding about the, our rules. Mm. Mm. Because right. it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still. Yeah. How to interpret, how to use the rule. Right. Yes, we have many orders. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so everything has some kind of special purpose. So I don't have to my special, I don't have to pursue my purpose. Because my life, my movement, my present is already perfect purpose. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to pursue no more meaning. Mm. I uh, at my young age, I was try to pursue something meaningless and pursue the purpose of the life. So I find that everything is purpose. This moment is my purpose. Life give me. So I just enjoy. I just to feel it. I just. Listen to the moment. This the point. Before I'm a person who practice a sun, sun meditation, I we we are a Buddhist religious person in society. So, if you if if we are, uh, we don't have any idea about so social problem, we are we are useless. If the lay people want to make this prayer big, then they have to do one hundred eight prostrations. So, with one time. Of the frustration, they can put one beat, and the second frustration, they can put the second beat, so like that. So after finishing the first round necklace, then they can use this necklace for counting their frustrations, their uh, one their frustrations. So this is the tool for their practicing, not as a symbol of the Buddhism or power of the Buddhism Buddha or something. So. Simply the 108 number means everything in the universe. So because we can meet this word with our senses. With our senses, the eye, nose, tongue, skin, ear, and mind. With the six senses, we can meet this word. Everything. We can see, we can listen, we can smell, we can taste, we can think, we can touch, right? Do we have extra? No? So, with these six senses, after meeting that, then we judge about this universe. From our standard, like this, mm, it's delicious. Mm, this is beautiful sound. Mm, this is beautiful painting. If the a big wave uh, coming to you, just enjoy. You can uh, you can wave. 
you can enjoy the wave. If you stand at the edge of the wave, it is very dangerous. But even if the same wave, if you stand at the deep of the ocean, you can enjoy the wave. Chanal informed his students that prostrations in front of statues of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas, chanting, and other Pure Land Buddhist practices were best performed after they had a spiritual knowing of harmony between numinous essence and functioning awareness of their minds. The Chogya order of Korean Buddhism chants in a mixture of Chinese and Korean during two da daily ceremonies. The Temple State Director and Monk told us the main focus in performing the ceremonies, indeed, all the practices at the Temple are meant to remind us of and return us to our original empty minds. The main problem Chanal warned about with Pure Land practices was that people would think they would need to reach for and obtain something outside of who they already were. Meals at the Temple were all vegan. Carefully cooked rice, vegetables, roots, and fungi provide what many would consider a healthy and morally conscious meal. During breakfast, we partook in a traditional monastic meal. Traditionally, a monk or nun would have one set of bowls and silverware for food to be immediately washed and cleaned after each meal. The monk guiding us named Ilga used the same bowls and silverware that had been placed in front of us. Generally, everyone kept silent and attempted to eat without thinking whether the food was pleasing or displeasing to us, as we had been instructed. Focusing on eating, not slowly or quickly, but on eating alone. Eating was purposeful, meant to sustain the body to function in daily activities. Eating was also taught as a form of meditation, by quieting the mind's response to food and to all external stimuli and mental functioning. Does the mind create all of our sense experience when we eat? Ilga explained, we must eat everything we take, or the greedily attached hungry ghosts will come from a lower realm of existence to our world and eat our leftovers, causing us to be reborn as a hungry ghost. With a radish and some hot water that had been individually poured into our bowls, we cleaned and polished any remnants. Tales of karmic merit and lower realms of rebirth are common in Buddhism and the indigenous folk beliefs in Korea, but can often lead to the belief that our quiet and empty mind has been permanently damaged and it is impossible for us to ever change our way of functioning in the world. As some Koreans do, I went to see a Buddhist nun and spend some time at Gensumsa temple every so often. It was only an hour-long subway ride and bus ride, plus a 20-minute hike into the mountains. At my first temple stay, I became friends with a Korean nun, Sunwoo. Two other Americans, a couple, and I drank tea with Sunwoo on Sunday morning. We talked about what Buddhists believe, and I asked her that if all things in life could be performed with meditation, how can I know what acts I should do? She replied saying to look back on my mind and see what was there. When I told her I was in Seoul for a semester, she wanted to have tea with me again. She could practice English and I could ask her questions she could tell I was still wanting to ask. I spent an afternoon or morning drinking tea or coffee with Sunwoo every few weeks at Gunsunsa for five months. Before I came, I would text Sunwoo on Kakao Talk, a Korean messaging app, and as long as she didn't have an obligation, I left from my dorm right away. In, in the, among his friend monk, 
in Korean Toban. So the one of the monk is in England now, and he is in the university, the Bristol University. I don't know exactly in Wales. Maybe. So he is studying there in the university, and the he club in there. So he is in a club, and that club is for the meditation. And many, he thought there would be just a few people who were interested in that meditation. But beyond his expectation, there were there were so many students together, wants to practice together. So, so he wanted to come back and do more practicing in the Korean Buddhist. Meditation center, so for practicing more together, more fluently. 